Good is the enemy of best. There's a lot of things that we do out of haste because we're afraid to miss an opportunity that we just sort of like pounce on it and say, yes, I'll do it, I'll do it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's from God. Well, good morning, everyone in internet land. It is a very nice day outside. I don't know why I start my vlogs with like telling you what the weather is. I just wanted to hop up here and talk about a subject that it's sort of gonna be off the cuff. I wanted to talk about if it is God. <laughs> Buttercup is like really wanting to be in on the action. So here's what I wanna talk about today. I wanted to talk about whether something is God or is it just good? Now, I think that there's a huge difference between the two, but you wouldn't really necessarily think it on the surface level. Why? Because everything that is of God is good, right? He's a good God, he's a good father, and so he gives us good things. But there is a sentence that I originally heard from a man called John Paul Jackson, which I actually take really close to my heart until today, and that is, good is the enemy of best. When it comes to making decisions in life, I think there has to be guidelines that help you make the right decisions. And oftentimes when you're facing with decisions that potentially are good decisions, meaning there's nothing bad with this decision, uh, it's not going to ruin your life, it's not sin, it's not something that's going to hurt other people or yourself, it could potentially be like a good decision with a good result, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's from God. And so how do we differentiate between what is God and what is just good? What I do is I first and foremost check my motives. Now this is a bit of a tricky one because you know the heart can be very deceitful. <laughs> we sort of want things and the heart want things and we don't necessarily know how to separate the fact that we just want something and the fact that it might just not even be from God. If you're a person who can be honest with themselves about what their motive is behind something, then I think that will go well for you in the long term. So for example, you can receive a very lucrative offer from someone from somewhere, and you're like, oh my gosh, this seems like really good. Why not just take this? It all seems good on the surface, the result will be good. But then when you actually just stop for a second and look at the motives behind why you would say yes, I think that's a very telling sign whether something is God or just good. But now here's the thing, even when things are from God, it doesn't mean that when we take whatever offer that is, that our motives are completely pure. And this is where you have to bring those motives to God and say, okay, God, I realize that I'm doing this because, I don't know, I want to be popular or I want to be loved or I just want uh, money and that's super, super greedy of me or gives me status, I'm trying to prove something. It's really important to take those thoughts and feelings and put them in front of God and say, okay, God, this is what I'm feeling. I don't want to make decisions based on what I'm feeling alone. Now, little disclaimer, it doesn't mean that even if something is from God, you will never have those little flesh things come into play. Now, here's a little disclaimer. Even when things are from God, it doesn't mean that your approach to it will be completely without the flesh or completely healthy. Not at all. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. But it does help you separate between why you would accept something and why you wouldn't. So I think the first step is always check your motives. So the second thing that I do after I check if I have some type of arterial motives is that I actually wait. I don't want to succumb to the pressure to decide things really, really fast. I think that there's a, a saying that my mom always says and she says, hastiness is from the devil. There's a lot of things that we do out of haste because we're afraid to miss an opportunity. We're afraid it's gonna be given to someone else. The moment has passed. They're not gonna think about us as an option anymore after that we just sort of like pounce on it and say, yes, I'll do it, I'll do it without actually configuring the whole, uh, how it fits into our life and if it even fits. Some things can look really, really good on the surface, but then when you look at the details, you're like, wait a second, this doesn't really add up. This doesn't actually fit well into my schedule and life right now with all my commitments. I can't actually take this on. For different reasons, when you take time, you suddenly realize that the offer doesn't uh, shine as bright as it did in the beginning. 
I don't know why he's crying. He has everything he needs. He's very talkative. And so that's the second thing that I do is I wait. The third thing that I do is I actually go and try and get godly counsel. Now, I don't trust everyone with giving me counsel, even though I do share with a lot of people what's going on with me. I think that there are... I haven't taken him on a walk in the last few days because I've been like not feeling well at home. So that could be it. He emerges. So the third thing that I do is that I share that information with godly people and I get their perspective on that thing. When your emotions are really involved in something and it's hard to receive guidance from God, then it's really good to go to people who are trusted in your life, meaning they have a good track record of good decisions, they operate in the fruit of the spirit, um, they operate in wisdom, they're patient people. Those people are who you want to turn to to ask the honest questions. Do you think this thing is good? Do you see me in this role? Do you think that this is a good idea? That is super important, not just for like accountability's sake, but because people do actually have good experience and they do have a good handle on who you are, what you need. It's good to turn to trusted people to get their advice, their insight, because oftentimes they can see things on you that you can't see on yourself. And one of those things could literally be, hey, that's really, really good, but it's maybe not the timing. Hey, that's really good, but you could approach it differently. Hey, it's really good, but. So those little signs of like, hey, stop for a moment or little red lights, other people can often see them way better than you do when your emotions are involved. So the last step that I would say is basically also the first step and the last step is to pray. Now, of course, it goes without saying that you are praying, you're communicating with God throughout all of this, but I really do believe that it needs... I really do believe that it needs to... <laughs> I don't know how people vlog when they have actual, like, children. They do probably just have to stop everything they're doing. Watch this, he's gonna play fetch. Ready, set, go! Anyways, the last step has to be bringing it back to God. And I believe that when you ask wisdom from the Holy Spirit, when you say, I really do need you, I really do need to understand if this is just a good idea or if it's actually from you, he will give you that wisdom. And I think the more you walk with God on a daily basis with the Holy Spirit on the small decisions as you do on the big decisions, the chasm between you understanding what is good and what is God, it sort of like narrows down. So I know that these steps are really simple. They're not anything crazy that you haven't heard before, but I think it's really good to have that um, renewal, that understanding, the reminders that it's okay to go through the process of understanding if something is actually from God, because even though you might not pay a huge, huge price for it, as in like, it's not a sin, it's not like gravely dangerous to your life, I think you still feel this feeling of like, I missed out somewhere, it's not the best decision, I'm losing something here, and you don't feel as much grace on that decision as you would if you were in God's perfect will. Now, I think that in every situation that we are, God can and will bless us. But I think that there's a difference between doing something that is just good and doing something that is God. So there's probably a lot of debate on what people think God's perfect will is, uh, if he blesses you or doesn't bless you. I believe that God wants to bless us in every situation. Nonetheless, that's probably a conversation for a different time. So I hope I can actually get this vlog out before I have to leave because I'm shooting it, editing and uploading it all before I have to leave and I hope that I can actually make that. So I wanted to say thank you guys for listening. Thank you for being here. Uh, comment down below what you think. It's so important for me to hear what you guys think about this subject. If you are new here, then welcome and feel free to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell somewhere over there. If you're not new here, then welcome back. I appreciate you. And I will see you guys in a vlog very, very soon.